A warm welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update from Monday, May 9. Police are continuing investigations into the discovery of the body of a man on Black Rock Main Road, St. Michael. Residents alerted officers in the area after detecting a pungent odor coming from the house. The man was found in the backyard. Residents identified the victim as Anthony Mings. A woman is assisting police with investigations. The island's pig farmers are holding strain on increasing pork prices. President of the Pig Farmers Association, Henderson Williams, says while feed prices continue to rise, farmers are doing the best they can to maintain current prices for consumers. We are very much aware um, that there is a, a new price increase um, for feed and certainly that has also impacted on pig farmers and uh, pork production. Uh, as it relates to an increase in price immediately, uh, that's something that we oftentimes give total consideration to. We have a, now a pricing model that we look at all of the inputs into production before we actually look to put any increases in place. So that's something that obviously would be under consideration because at the end of the day, we want to continue to be viable um, for all of our operations. And uh, we always look at it from all sides, including the impact that it would have on our customer base. Um, we really don't want to have a situation where there's, a, where there's dampening uh, in demand for our product. And uh, certainly we will always consider that, but something we will always have to review, understanding what is happening in the global space. Government has invested millions to train hundreds of teachers to better equip them to manage the online teaching environment. The Ministry of Education has launched the 21st Century Educators Hub. The program is a partnership between the Ministry of Education, the National Transformation Initiative and Coursera. Speaking at Monday's launch, Education Minister Kay McConney said the program gives educators the competencies that they need to survive in the 21st century. Now the collaboration with Barbados and Coursera through the NTI is one that is designed specifically to improve the quality of education through the provision of professional development courses for educators and education leaders. It is intended not only to address the skill gaps that we currently have, but also to bring innovative content with a local flavor to support our national ambition in new and interesting areas. She also disclosed that teachers won't be under any strain to pay for upgrading their skills through the program. For government will be paying for these courses that are part of this education hub. Coursera is a United States-based online course provider which works with universities and other organizations to offer online courses, certifications and degrees in a variety of subjects. The power of the partnerships that we see here today represent the potential for 120,000 Barbadians utilizing those 20,000 licenses that the government purchased for the people of Barbados and another 20,000 scholarships that Google gifted to Barbados to ensure that no stone was left unturned. Veteran MP Edmund Hinkson wants to see Barbadians given first option to work in the construction sector. He's concerned that some local construction firms hire overseas workers first, but he's hoping that the recently launched construction gateway can change this. Well, I am a Caribbean person. Anyone who knows me knows that. But it has to be, yeah, Barbadians first, Caribbean people after. Uh, it, it can be a situation where businesses, construction companies, are, as we speak, applying for Colombians to come here to do construction. When we have Barbadians here who, through this Construction Gateway Initiative, will be given three months training and be able to get a job in plumbing, in electricals, in tiling, in labor, masonry, whatever. So you can't be calling me up, Mr. Dinkson, I want a job, when we have all of these opportunities here. Plus, of course, you're going to get a stipend. And, and, and the government has committed to um, giving an apprenticeship 
uh, attached to a company or enterprise for people who go into this construction gateway initiative. So these are the opportunities tied in, of course, with this program, which will be giving you soft skills, to give you skills in areas to be able to get you a job. Hank Sun, the patron of the Clarkson Foundation's Life and Work Skill Program, was speaking at the launch of the fourth rung of the initiative. The Work Skill Program consists of teaching sessions and workshops geared at developing students' confidence, self-esteem, team and analytical skills necessary for the modern world of work. He says it has been reaping much success. About 80% of those who have graduated from the three previous programs have found employment within three months of the graduation or have been able to start their own businesses. Now that is a fantastic record. Of achievement. In the latest COVID-19 update, there were 264 new infections, 121 males and 143 females recorded on Sunday, May 8 from the 825 tests conducted by the Best of Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 54 persons under the age of 18 and 210 who were 18 years and older. There were 113 people in isolation facilities, while 3,852 were in home isolation. Tests carried out by the coroner's office have revealed that over the last six weeks, an additional 24 persons in the community had died with the virus. As at May 8, there were 430 COVID-19 related deaths. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy, means more adventure. Cure oxygen. Natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity, and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. The regional news, the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service will undertake a major gun retrieval exercise in response to the rising crime rate. Acting Police Commissioner MacDonald Jacob estimates there are over 12,000 illegal firearms and is pleading with citizens to assist in taking them off the streets. Sunil Lala reports. In so far as the crime situation is concerned, it is horrendous. It is mind-blowing. National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines says government remains concerned about the rising crime rate but admits that it is not an overnight fix. He says the TTPS has assured that increased patrols, especially in hotspot areas, will be heightened. But he says a robust gun retrieval exercise will be undertaken to get the weapon of choice for murders off the streets. We are told that there are about 12,000 illegal firearms in this country from intelligence. The gatherers of intelligence surmise that that is the amount. Some of us feel it might be more. But the idea is to get them. The minister adds that border security will also be heightened, recalling an exercise over the weekend where the Cape class vessels assisted in capturing contraband from eight individuals. Acting Police Commissioner MacDonald Jacobs says the rising murder rate is of major concern and is pleading with citizens to assist in bringing down the annual average of 440 murders. We have inherent in our society criminal elements and we all need to work together to deal with it. And if we constantly look at individuals and superheroes, it will solve the problem. And Acting Prisons Commissioner Deo Posad Ramita says of major concern is that a large number of murders emanate from behind prison walls with contraband and cell phones coming inside via rogue prison officers. It's a big money business. Drugs is an industry. Cell phone in the prison is an industry. These inmates are being facilitated by citizens of this country. On the international front, Sri Lanka's Prime Minister resigned on Monday, hours after clashes with pro- and anti-government demonstrators in the commercial capital Colombo amid the country's worst economic crisis. Olivia Shan reports. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa resigned on Monday. 
hours after clashes with pro and anti-government demonstrators in Colombo. That he said in a letter to make way for a unity government to try to find a way out of the country's worst economic crisis in history, one which has spurred weeks of unprecedented demonstrations. But protesters said they also wanted his brother to stand down as president. The day of chaos and violence began with hundreds of ruling party supporters rallying outside the prime minister's official residence before marching to an anti-government protest site outside the presidential office. Pro-government supporters, some armed with iron bars, attacked anti-government demonstrators at the Gota Gogamo tent village that sprang up last month and became the vocal point of nationwide protests. Police used tear gas rounds and water cannon to break up the confrontation. A curfew was imposed across the country. At least nine people were taken to Colombo's National Hospital for treatment relating to injuries or tear gas inhalation, the hospital official said, declining to be named. Sri Lanka's economy has been hit hard by the global health crisis, rising oil prices and tax cuts. Long queues of cooking gas in recent days have frequently turned into impromptu protests. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.